We got ourselves a new gift for the 350Z. This is long overdue. You guys have been yelling at me to get wise fab on the Z and today we're gonna make that happen. Oh, this box is really heavy. I saw a lot of comments from you guys saying that I need to like leave the car in the ignition mode for like 15 seconds to let the glow plugs warm up. The dealership told me that that doesn't apply anymore. I'm not the most educated about diesel, but they told me technology's come a long way and you no longer need to do that. So excuse me for doing what they told me. I'm just listening to the dealership. Trucks are definitely growing on me. I have fallen in love with this car for like the four days that I've owned it. Having a gas tank that has 35 gallons in it, it can go like 500 miles of full tank is awesome. And having 800 foot pounds of torque is awesome. And having a big spacious backseat and a huge like truck bed is awesome. Today's project is now installing the new Wise Fab angle kit on the 350Z. Now the reasons why I'm switching over to Wise Fab rather than keeping the PBM is personally, I've had some troubles with the PBM kit. I've always liked it because they are local to where I am. They're actually about 25 minutes away from this location, but I oftentimes get this arm bending way too often in times that it shouldn't. I've contacted PBM about it, and every time they've told me it's designed to bend that way, which I understand is that it, you'd rather have that break than something else happen with the car, but I've personally experienced it in times where nothing should have bent. Like, it, it, it shouldn't have what is the word? Fail safe on itself, if that makes sense. Uh, another benefit of running WiseFab is that it, it's made of stronger material, which is why a lot of people use it more than PBM. And you actually get more angle out of this kit than you do on the PBM kit. And there's a good amount of times where I've actually reached max angle, which is fine, but it's gonna be cool now knowing that I'll have, I think it's close to maybe like 20 degrees more. Don't quote me on that. It's not too much, but it's but it's a good enough to like have it be a reason to get WiseFab. This is gonna change the driving geometry of the car, which essentially means the way the wheel rotates on itself when you turn the steering wheel is actually gonna be different and feel quite different than the PBM kit. So when we go and drive this later this weekend, it's gonna be a little bit new for me and it's gonna be a new feeling, which is kind of intimidating switching mid-season, which, which was one of my biggest reasons as to why I didn't wanna to switch to this mid-season is because I've been told it's like a new driving style, but I'm over breaking things and I'm hoping I'll have better luck with this WiseFab kit. So this literally replaces everything. This is like a whole new drop knuckle that, that we'll be doing. We have a new upper A arm and we have a full lower control arm and new tie rods. So this is pretty much what our end product is going to look like. I hope this isn't too difficult. It looks kind of difficult. I've seen and heard of some people having some trouble with it, but it should be pretty straightforward. First things first, let's lower this car down, take these wheels off and start getting off this PBM kit. I have to remove this A arm, this whole entire like drop knuckle and the little control arm. So right now I'm just connecting the calipers and once that's off, I have to take the rotors off because all of this has to go on the new WiseFab kit. I'm not trying to bore you guys with all this boring stuff. I'm just gonna continue taking this off and update you when I'm done. Why? The first step in putting this all back together is getting these upper A arm back in the slot. These are like super, super tight and putting this WiseFab one in, it's been like kind of a struggle. So we've been like hammering it in and I finally just got it. Oh, you just wiggled it out oh, of place. It just got well out of place. Oh man. As you can tell by Calvin's reaction, it's been a bitch to get it there. I didn't, I wasn't here. I was eating tacos. Hold on boys. <laughs> Lately we've been getting an ice cream man coming to the shop. Ice cream man, ice cream man, ice cream man. Oh. I need you to buy me a SpongeBob and I've been made. Can I have bubbles please? The girl? Yeah. Which one? Bubbles. Powerpuff? Yeah, how much is that? Sweet, thank you. Okay, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. When I was younger, I used to be like low-key ashamed that I used to watch Powerpuff Girls, but now looking back at it, I wish I rocked that shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bubbles, Blossom, Bubbles. what? Bubbles. What? Bubbles. You didn't watch this show. Wait, you just got our ice cream? Okay, we're putting in the drop knuckle. I don't know what this is, I've never seen Wait, 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 wait. I've never seen the, is that, is that what it's called, T? Don't make me look like a closer. Drop knuckle. Knuckle assembly. Never seen this before because I have a B or Z. B or Zs don't have this. So we decided to put this on without the rotor. And once we get this all bolted up, I'm gonna come back on and put the rotor and brake assembly back on. I'm sure you could assemble it off the car, but we just thought it'd be easier to do it after the fact. I guess we'll tighten that once we get everything bolted in. 
Getting this lower control arm to line up is pretty difficult. We've been like smacking at it for the past hour now. And we're super, super close from getting this bolt in. I have the screwdriver in right now just to hold its place. But we're going to attach a ratchet strap to the side of the lift. And we're going to pull the geometry of the angle kit towards the back of the car. And then hit up, hoping to create like the perfect amount to slip this bolt in. Once this bolt slips in, it should be super easy. But it's getting it to that point is extremely difficult. Or at least it's been proving difficult for us. Yep, keep going, Calf. Nope, you gotta be consistent. Drive that fucker. I can't even. Oh, wait, uh, wait, stop, 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 stop. This kit doesn't have any provisions to run a sway bar. And not everyone runs a front sway bar. I've always chose to run one just because I feel like it, I feel like I like it. But I guess on this kit, they don't expect you to use it at all. Normally you'd have an attachment somewhere like right around here and it just doesn't have one at all. And I also just texted Adam LZ who recently put this in on his 350Z and he said, yeah, you just don't run a sway bar, which is weird. I don't know the logic behind that, but I guess you're not supposed to run one. So we'll probably end up taking that front sway bar off. All right, I was moving on to do the tie rod and then I came across this bolt, which uses like a huge Allen key. All we have is up to a 10. This looks like a 12 or something. So we're gonna have to run to Harbor Freight. Off to Harbor Freight we go. Uh, when I plug that stereo in, so I think it's just a, something's wrong with the radio. There's a background. I think this is what we need. Safety. That's not it. That's not it either. Damn, Those are both enough. too small. Uh, be where all the little kids are. I don't know, you have to walk probably on the first Dude, time. this is like not it. Uh-oh, boys. This could be an issue. Harbor Freight, are you going to let me down right now? Mickey. Kid's been farting all day. Oh, that looks like it could be it. Nah. I mean, yeah. That's a little loose. That's not what it's for. It would do it. It would get her on there, but... It's definitely not, it's definitely not ideal, but it would do. I don't know what that is. H14? I literally don't want to do this right now, but I think I might. Whenever I come in here, I just can't help but start buying new shit. We've like lost all of our sockets, lost all of our wrenches, and we're moving into a new shop soon, but I swear, every time I only come for one thing and I leave with a million things. Well, not a million things, but like six different items. Shout out to Adam, I just FaceTimed him and he gave me a full breakdown of it. Cal, you wanna explain what Adam just told no, us? This is very important with WiseFab. There's a bunch of stuff in here. This is your bump stop, so the- Ackerman, Backerman. I don't know what Ackerman, I don't know what that means. All I know, I understand. You know about the Backerman angle? Backerman, Ackerman? Mm -hmm. Oh. Evan Ackerman. Shout out to Evan, Thought just hit 100,000 subs. Woo! Go show him some love, the link will be down below. Yeah, do that. What's the Ackerman? I, I don't know Ackerman. Don't ask me about Ackerman. I know what this bump stop is. TJ doesn't understand, so I'm explaining it as if I'm talking to TJ. I'm trying to learn here, man. This thing is equivalent to this thing. It's equivalent to this thing. Oh! Yes, let oh. me show you. Let me show you. Well, I don't understand the whole dots thing Ready? yet. Ready? You want to see what so, so, in this video, I'm going to be going over the Ackerman principle or Ackerman steering. Jason, now, shout out to you. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about the bump stop. Okay, talk about the bump stop. So the bump stop has dots and stuff. You see? So what do the different dots represent, Cal? Um, distance. So one being more angle, more turning in that way. Adam said that he runs it on number two and runs no bump stop. Apparently, there's a lot of um, debate and controversy of what to run and running no bump stop with like medium Ackerman ruins racks faster than if you weren't. There's a whole bunch of debate on that. I'm gonna run what Adam said, and I will see how it goes. So shout out to you, Adam. TJ, you just gotta, you just gotta lick the stamp and send it, you know? When trying to slip on the offset rack spacer for the WiseFab kit, rather than using the teeth method that the PBM used, we replaced this like two weeks ago. The WiseFab actually slips over on top of this, and because the WiseFab uses this teeth method where it slips in these notches, sorry, I wasn't filming it, where it slips in these notches, it actually like kind of split them out a little bit and made it a little bit too wide for our wise fab spacer So Calvin is on the other side right now And he's essentially hammering this back into place and making it smaller so that this can slide on top of it And I think it's working shout out to Calvin for just being an engineer I mean and figuring out ways to do things forcing it on there. I'm gonna generously apply some thread locker 
You do not want this bolt coming loose and it oftentimes does. So hopefully this will keep it on there for a little bit. I don't know why it's not focusing today. All right, RX-7 update. While these boneheads have been putting the wise fab on the 350Z, um, I have been working on the FD. And what that entails right now is we've got the engine here and there's a lot of things going on with that as well. Kind of all over the place at the moment because this stuff all touches one another. So one thing has to go in place, then things have to plug into it or we're waiting on a part. There's just all kinds of stuff going on. So today what I've done is I've actually got the uh, Haltec system, which is the engine management system and the um, fuse panel in place. It's, it's in the kick panel on the passenger side. And now I've routed all the wiring in through the uh, firewall grommet um, and it's all run out front here so basically this stuff all plugs into um, engine components injectors those sorts of things um, and it also got some of the the wiring routed over to the front wheel area same has to be done on the passenger side a lot of work happening we're doing little things like touching up the air or the horns that go on the front core support so they look more like this just getting all the stuff buttoned up the airbag sensors in place and um, getting the wiring all tucked up underneath so that it's all gone it's still a little bit of a mess at the moment but we're almost there so another thing that I've been working on is a lot of the wiring is just destroyed in this thing as I told you guys previously from all the heat in the engine bay and so we've got a charge harness here that basically I stripped all the loom off of it because essentially it was just crispy like bacon um, um, this is a power harness that comes from the main power fuse box, fuse panel, and this is where it plugs into the chassis harness um, and sends power to, to uh, items around the car. I've gone ahead and labeled all this stuff and what it actually does. And what I'm going to do is actually remove the things that we don't need, like this um, this coil harness to the um, engine, because we've gotten rid of the factory um, coils and we're using an aftermarket coil, so this can actually be pulled out of the harness. This uh, ground to engine and battery ground is all going to get also removed because uh, we're actually doing a um uh, basically taking the battery that used to be in the in the engine bay and we're actually going to move it into a cubby hole behind the passenger seat so a lot of those wires can be taken out um, so we're going to go ahead and remove those and get that re-loomed and then everything will be back in the engine bay and uh, we can start putting the engine in so i knew this wise fab kit like pushed your wheels out a little bit farther but keep in mind on the pbm i was running like 43 mil of spacer now with this fully installed Look at how far the rotor sticks out. No dude, the wheel is gonna sit so wow. far. Perfect. <laughs> That's perfect, dude. Damn. It's perfect. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of like no more spacers, boys. No more spacers. I buy 40 mil spacers. Damn, that looks awesome. I can use them on my car. Now we have the front left done. We learned a lot on that side, and I think that we can now do this opposite side and probably my guess, like an hour and a half. Three hours later. Kevin's here to the rescue, baby. No progress? I they don't even know about this yet. I haven't, oh, I haven't updated it in so long. My God. Do I need to tell him? Yeah, you can. You know, so I get here and I'm trying to figure out what these two are doing. The subframe brackets here, they're bent. This no longer lines up. So we've been, uh, I haven't. These two. Have been here for how long? We've been on this for like two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Trying to figure out how to get that uh, line back up. And the best solution was to just hammer away. I can't even tell you how many hours this oh, took Kevin us. Came. That's Kevin. the reason. <laughs> Kevin comes and he knows things. Long story short, guys, we figured out once going to put the Wise Fab back in the car that not only was the subframe bent, but the actual frame peg of the car, whatever you want to call that, is bent too. And we just, as you can kind of tell by these bunk ratchet straps and other ratchet straps on the ground, we essentially, for the past two and a half hours, hammered and bent and did physics to re-bend the subframe and that peg back into place. And although you, we will never be able to do this track side. 100% forget about it. For right now, Forget we rebent the frame with our hands and got the lower control arm to fit in. I need a new subframe, but That's we did so fix cool. that. All right, so we're ending the night with this LCA finally in. I don't know, that's sketchy. Like the fact that the frame is bent, it's definitely not good, but I guess it's still manageable. It's fine, it's in there. Dude, just put it in, teach. We're gonna leave this mess here. I don't think we've ever had the garage this messy I before. I feel disgusting. I feel disgusting along with this warehouse being disgusting. I don't know about you, look at your face. Look at your face. 
Do I have shit on my face? I do. You have so much shit on your face, DJ. Well, damn. We did a lot of work today. I'm super hyped on that. I don't want to give you guys any false promises, but I think we may be putting this in later this week. And we'll finally get some more RX-7 content coming soon. So I'm feeling good. I'm going to jump on the edit and get that ready. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching today's video. As always, peace out and keep moving forward. And I'm feeling good.